Hey everybody, Rob Hoke here, Bass Stalker Fishing. Uh, we're gonna do our third video in in the series, the best, the, the top five baits that every beginner should know how to fish. Um, and if you don't remember, it's the spinner bait. Uh, we're gonna go over my setup, the the rod, the reel, the gear ratio, the line I like to use. We're gonna go over the different types of spinner baits I use, um, the colors, the techniques. And the location um, obviously I'm not going to do an on the water shot I'm in hunt mode uh, it's my all my stuff's already put away so so we'll, we'll get into this right now um, the rod I like to use I like to use the obviously the Abba Garcia Veritas 2.0 I like uh, either a 7 foot medium heavy or a 7 3 medium heavy I like the Veritas it still has a flexible tip um, so it's not so stiff to where when that when that fish loads up on the rod that rod's not trying to set the hook for you and that that's important when you're fishing it in like along wood or logs or laydowns or stumps or whatever you don't want that rod to be so heavy and so such a fast action where it's kind of snagging the bait for you um this the, this rod still has a pretty good tip and uh you mix that with the line that i use and it's it's pretty snag proof um, but that's the rod I like the reel you, you kind of have two options here um, I, I like a six a six four to one gear ratio I think that's perfect I can burn I can burn the bait but I can also it's also not so fast that the fish aren't going to catch up to it or I'm gonna lose uh, I'm not gonna get as many strikes because I'm going too fast um, but I, you could, I use uh, a lot of Revo S's, which are a 6 4 to one eight ball bearings. This one's a little more expensive than the Aura SX 6 4 to one um, Both are good reels. Um, you kind of just pick what's in your price range and, and go with it. But I definitely suggest the 6 4 to one gear ratio. Um, the line I'm going to use when I'm spinnerbait fishing is uh, P-Line 100% fluorocarbon. 15 pound test um, You don't want to throw braid. There's no there's no stretch at all in braid and I don't like using monofilament uh, Because I think there's too much stretch. So your fluorocarbon is uh, the happy medium Between those two um, Not a lot of stores are carrying p-line 100% fluorocarbon a lot of stores are carrying the Berkeley Trilene and, and stuff like that if you want to get your hands on some p-line and give it a try and I highly recommend it um, go to ta TackleWarehouse.com. I really, I shop there for almost all my fishing stuff. It's a great, it's a great site. They always have sales. They have uh, free shipping on orders of over 50 bucks. And I, I can't, I can't recommend that site enough. But that's pretty much my setup. Uh, and now we'll get into the different types of spinnerbaits. So the different types of spinnerbaits, the, the, the main two types of spinnerbaits I use are going to be your double willow, which these are willow blades. Um, and the double willows for more clear water um, because you're going to fish them a little faster to make sure that that fish doesn't get a good look at the bait. You kind of just want them to see the shape of the, of the blades, the flash off the blades and the profile of the actual bait. You don't want them to get, you don't want to slow roll it in, in clear water because you don't want them to get a good look at the bait because when fish get a good look at a spinner bait, it doesn't really look natural. So you're fishing these baits a little faster, you're giving them twitches and you're killing it and, and starting again, you're changing speeds, you're banging it off a of cover. Um, so when I'm fishing clear water, I, I like I like to fish it a little faster so they don't get that 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 view of it, that good view of it. The other style that you're going to use most often is uh, a Willow Colorado. Obviously, that's your Willow blade. There's your Colorado blade. This is for more stained water, where where it has a little bit less visibility because this bait's going to be a little slower. Just naturally, it's going to create a little bit more vibration with that Colorado blade on there. Um, so when I'm fishing stained water, this is the, the, the style I'm going to turn to. It's the Willow Colorado. And I, and I do fish another style, but that's for really muddy water. 
Um, and then I'm kind of torn between the chatterbait and and the spinnerbait. Even with the stained water, I'm kind of torn between the two. Um, but it's a double Colorado. It's got uh, a small Colorado blade like this. And then it's also got a bigger Colorado blade. But that's for really dirty water where you want a lot of vibration. And you're really not even worried about them getting a good look at it. Because they're not going to get a good look at it. They're, they're pretty much feeding off the vibration at that point. Um, now we'll get into uh, the location and, and how to fish them. Alright guys, now... One thing I want you guys to, to learn about spinnerbaits is there are weather conditions and situations where they're really good, and there's other situations where you I, I'm going to go to something else. Now, spinnerbaits, they, they shine it on cloudy days, and they also shine when, there's, when the wind's up and there's a little bit of chop on the water. And the reason for that is this is a bait that you're gonna that's gonna stay above the fish in the water column it's gonna if the if the fish are hanging out in eight to ten feet you want this going about six feet down five feet down you're gonna keep it above the fish and like I said earlier you don't want the fish to get a good look at this bait so the reason why these weather conditions help is obviously clouds it's a low light condition they're not gonna see the bait as well anyway um, but the chop on the water, if when the, when this bait's above the fish and the fish are looking up at that at that bait, you, they have the surface water behind it, and when that surface water is choppy, it's going to break up the the view of this of this bait, and all they're going to see is that the the shape of the blades, they're going to see the flash of the blades, they're going to see the skirt flaring, and they're going to just basically see the the general outline of of the bait. And that's why this bait imitates bait fish so well. Um, and that's why they work very well in those conditions. Now, location-wise, spinner baits can, can really be used anywhere. You can use them on the bank. You can use them on rock piles. You can use them on stumps, laydowns, um, on points, creek channels. Really, they're really good anywhere. It's real, really dictated by the weather. But... Um, there's different ways to fish these baits depending on the cover you're fishing. Now, the, the, the stumps, the docks, the laydowns, those, those you're going to fish kind of like you would a square bill. You're going to be, you're going to be reeling this, this bait into cover. You're going to have this banging off a of cover. And, and the reason for that, and that's why I use striking spinner baits. I, I love striking spinner baits. Um, I love the head design on the striking spinnerbaits. I feel that they, the way they construct their head design, it allows me to bang that off cover more effectively without getting the bait hung up. Um, I mean, a lot of spinner, there, there's really not much difference to spinnerbaits. Um, what I, what I feel you get with with the striking spinnerbaits is you get better quality material um, that they use to make these baits. Um, but so if you're fishing around any type of wood, you're going to want to bang this off of the cover. Uh, and what that does, it'll cause the blades to bang together, the blades to, to flash. It's getting that skirt to flare and, and that change of direction. Those are all things that, that are going to trigger strikes. Um, and these are definitely a reaction strike bait. Now, if you're fishing a point or a creek channel or the bank where you're kind of just kind of bringing it to the bank and reeling it back where there's really nothing to bang it off of the, the worst thing you can do is just reel at a certain speed um, if there's no cover to do those three things you need to to do it you need to create the banging of the blades the flaring of the skirt and the change of direction yourself with the way you retrieve the bait um, I mean, there's times where you can catch fish with a spinnerbait just reeling it, but you're going to lose a lot of strikes. You're going to miss a lot of strikes because you're just reeling at a constant speed. So what I like to do is if I'm fishing the bank with a spinnerbait because the, the weather dictates it, I'm going to be giving twitches to the rod. I'm going to be changing my speed. I'm going to be burning it and then all of a sudden pause and, and start up again. And, and that's really the key because... Every time I twitch that rod, these blades are banging together. That skirt's flaring. Uh, you can do a lot of stop and goes. You can burn it, burn it, burn it, and then pause and then burn it again. Um, and all those things 
can trigger strikes. And what you're trying to do is you're going to kind of mess around over and over and over until you find out what's working that day. Because every day is different. Anybody who, who bass fishes know that every day is different. So keep experimenting. And when you get a strike, try to emulate that retrieve on the next cast and then the next cast until you get another strike. Now you know that there's fish in that area. Now you can slow down, use a different, a different technique and try to put more fish in the boat. Um, color wise. Now I don't get too crazy with color, um, with anything, with my plastics either. I mean, I do have a lot of plastics, but a lot of that is different style of plastics. I, I really try to stay four or five colors and with some stuff, I will have specialty, specialty colors, but uh, I'm always going to have a chartreuse in white. Um, I'm always going to have just a chartreuse. I'm always going to have a white and, uh, and a darker color like a green pumpkin or a bluegill. Though, now, for spinnerbaits, that's really, really my main colors. I, uh, I mean, for the, dark, for the double Colorado ones where I'm fishing really dirty water, I'm going to have... I'm going to use those chartreuse colors. I'm going to use blacks, uh, black and blues. Um, but I don't really get into those with the double willow or the willow Colorado. That's really just my, my really dirty water colors. So, I mean, I, I try to stick every, keep everything uh, four to five colors. You don't need to go out and buy every color spinner bait that that company makes because you don't have to. Um, a lot of times one of these four or five colors is going to catch fish just as well as a, a color that's just a little bit different. Um, but that's pretty much it. If, uh, if you have a question about it, if I missed anything, um, just let me know in the comments section. Uh, but I mean, they're, they're great baits and, and that's part of the reason. They're, they're very easy to fish. You can't really mess a spinner bait up. And that's, a, that's one of the reasons why they're very good for kids or beginners to fish because as long as you're not just reeling it at one speed, they'll catch fish. If the weather conditions are right, they'll catch fish anywhere. They'll catch them on points. They'll catch them on laydowns. They'll catch them in coves, off of stumps, under docks. Um, that, that's what makes them so effective at, at catching fish. Uh, so give them a try. If, uh, if you guys ever have any questions, put them in the comments section, or you can go to my Facebook page that I just started. Uh, it's, it's the same name, Bass Stalker Fishing, so check us out there, and hopefully you'll give me a like on the, uh, you'll like the channel. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do so. It's, it, I really appreciate it. And uh, if I don't do another video, have a, have a good holiday season. Take care.